Hi, this is Mike here on Arco County Homestead. Today I want to talk to you about building your own off-grid power station and what you're going to need to do that. The fundamental bits of that you will need is a source of charge, be it a wind turbine or solar panels, somewhere to store that charge, batteries, a control unit to regulate the charge coming to the batteries, and finally an inverter to step up that power from your uh, 12 volt, 24, whatever your batteries are, up to your mains voltage of 220 or 110 whatever it is in your uh, country. The final thing you're going to need is somewhere to put it. You need a building to put it. I don't recommend that you put these things inside your house. The reason for that is simply fire safety. If anything goes wrong with any of the equipment, shorts or has an internal fault, it could set your house on fire. So, charge, storage, regulation, inverter and structure. What we are using here is a combination of solar and wind. We have solar panels outside, we have a wind turbine on the roof which is running a 300 watt generator. We have four 12 volt batteries to store that power and the inverter to switch it from 12 volts which is what our system is running here up to the 220 volts that we need for inside the house. The final component then is the wiring to do all that and that's probably the most important part because if your wiring is too small it's going to heat up and potentially be a fire risk. If it's too big it's not a problem. You, it, will, it will be suitable for adding to your system as you grow your system. The one thing I will say and just cut the, the nonsense here and now is it is going to cost you a lot of money to build a system that will replace your mains requirements. What you really should be intending to do is to slowly wean yourself off your mains and replace that with your off-grid stuff. So basic things like your TV, uh, you know, your microwave, your, your refrigerator, your freezer, those are the kind of things you can start with. Heating pumps as well, the circulation pumps for your heating inside your house, they're quite small consumption as well, usually about 110 watts, so they're ideal for switching across. So, without further ado, let's start. The batteries, our storage. Each of these batteries is 100 amp hours, which gives us 400 amp hours each at one amp consumption, or each one can do 850 amps peak draw momentarily. You're probably not gonna see that um, under normal usage conditions. The wiring then has to be suitable to do that and these batteries are linked in parallel to keep the system at 12 volts. The reason why I'm using 12 volts is because it's the easiest to set up and the parts, of, you know, control units, inverters are widely available and probably a bit cheaper, you know, price wise, you know, suit the budget a bit better to get you started. Next up, control units. This solar control unit here is able to handle 80 amps coming in from the solar panels and we'll go over and have a look at the panels in a minute. So anything above 80 amps and it's not going to do it. This is the wiring coming in from the panels, they're really easy to set up, there's only six connections on it. Positive and negative for your battery because obviously it's a DC system, it's not AC yet, we're not at the inverter yet. Nice juicy wiring to handle the current coming in from your panels because that's really what you got to keep an eye on is your current flow. Voltage is, is, is simply tells you what sort of stage you're in or what level you're operating at. Current or ampage is telling you what's actually coming in to your batteries and through your unit. Over here we have the inverter. Um, inverters are something I've really really had a, a couple of tough lessons with. We started off with this little guy here and it was, I think it was about 200 euros. It ran quite well for about two months until I noticed one day that the fans weren't working anymore. Inside these they've got little cooling fans to keep everything nice and cool inside and stop them overheating. When you switch this unit on the fans come on straight away and they're running constant, it's set up for that. I noticed one day the fans weren't running, luckily I caught it in time because that would have caused a fire. So we upgraded to this fella over here and this fella ran quite well for about three months again and uh, this one cost 500 euros and uh, both are widely available on Amazon and eBay by the way um, and I thought that this would do the job and I was proven wrong 
every now and again this has a problem it either reads overcharge or undercharge and I've opened it up I don't know how many times I've changed the fan control resistor it had an issue with fans also um, I changed the fan control transistor um, but I'm gonna try switching on now and if the siren goes off the fault is still present uh, no the fault is not present so for the moment this is working and it's stepping up what we're getting as our charge level 14.4 and that's stepping that up to 220 AC and that will run everything happily inside so we'll switch it back off again to run through costs each of these batteries about 120 euros each here in the Republic of Ireland four of them you do the maths yourself the inverter 500 we're up over a thousand euros at this stage the control unit another 80 euros we started off with a smaller solar control unit because we just had three panels to start off with now we've got eight and this little guy worked really well until eventually it failed and I noticed that the voltage started creeping way way up it didn't regulate the voltage anymore at the 14.4 which is what your 12 volt system will suit at that's what your car charges at by the way as well when your engine is running and your alternator is charging up your batteries it's in between 14 and 15 volts charge rate this worked really well and it was about 10 quid on eBay many many years ago but eventually it did fail too and I noticed it was creeping up to 18 volts and again I was just in the right place at the right time to disconnect the system and switch it off before this went on fire okay so having a closer look at our batteries we can see that each one is connected in parallel positive to positive to positive to positive and the same then on the negative side negative to negative negative and negative one common mistake that people make would be to connect all of the batteries together positive to negative and to have your incoming and outgoing leads on the end of one battery not the best way to do it because what will happen is this battery will charge and draw at 100 percent this battery will charge and draw at about 98 percent this one could be down to about 85 percent charging and drawing and this one's probably down around 75 percent charging and drawing whichever battery is on the end of the chain is going to be the one doing the least amount of work and getting the least amount of charge and it factors up gradually to that until you come to your connection end the best way to do this and to have them operate properly as a more balanced bank is that you take your positive on one end of your bank and your negative off the other end of your bank okay so we've come around to our solar array here these panels are probably one of the best things I've ever bought it's a bit sunny at the moment so don't mind me squinting the first three is what we started with here each of these panels was 100 euros each and we bought eight of them we started with the first three and each one of these panels is capable of providing 10 amps at 12 volts each so three of these all together in perfect conditions you'll get roughly about 30 amps now bear in mind that perfect conditions requires the exact angle to fit to meet the sun and you know that angle has to be held for a period of time once you see behind me we've got five of those they're slightly smaller in size but they provide the exact same output the reason why I've got them laid out in a, a 90 degree configuration is purely to follow the sun across the sky the first three here catch the morning sun as it goes up behind us and the five behind me catch the midday and evening sun as it tracks all the way over the other side of the valley beautifully enough that means that for most of the day we get between 20 and 30 amps at 12 volts coming in through the controller and into our system if you only have one set of panels facing one direction on a fixed frame your peak time that they are going to charge for is only going to be maybe an hour or two every day so if you can set up a rotating frame that follows the sun happy days for us we're on fixed frames so um, we need to have different options each way now that light is going to change depending on your season and your location on the planet and um, for us our winter sun sets straight over that way and rises over there but in summertime we get a lot more hours and it rises over there and sets all the way off over there so these panels are really really going to perform well in summertime but for winter time we're still getting the best of both worlds okay our wind turbine now all of this is homemade 
probably do a separate video detailing the construction a bit better. But to sum it up, it's all used from recycled parts. The only thing that was new was the generators. Basically it's made from sewer pipe, new sewer pipe, not old sewer pipe, um, bicycle wheels and old kids tra uh, trampoline frame. Lots of grease, couple of brackets, couple of screws and bolts, all in a nice sturdy wooden frame. And the generator then, sitting on a little cage of its own which is spring mounted as a shock absorption system just to allow for the bumps in the frame as the frame rotates. And anybody with a keen eye might be able to spot that, yes that is a skateboard wheel and it works very well. So if we look, and that's all there is to it. Set up something that catches the wind, turns freely enough that it will stay turning and has enough torque in the turn to actually drive the generator. Okay, to finish off this episode, this is an ongoing project. There's still a lot more to be done to it over the coming weeks and months. As you can see, there's a lot of wiring here that needs tidying up. In the next episode about off-grid power, we'll talk more about the wind control units, which switch it from the three-phase AC that comes in from the generators into DC and regulates it at 12 volts for the batteries. So guys, listen, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share our videos and stay tuned for more great content on Arco Kenny Homestead. Thanks very much. Bye.